Welcome back to Introduction to Engineering Design. Today we're going to work on using SolidWorks to make a circular pattern. And we're going to make this neat little symmetric shape that's shown on your screen with just a few easy clicks. So let's get started. First, if you haven't already, please download the instructions out of the LMS. You'll find this in Module 1.3.3, Making Circular Patterns. Uh, today, we're going to learn about using is a few uh, new tools. One new sketch tool, which is really to uh, use Polygon. And uh, then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to need to learn some new features, specifically a circular pattern. We'll go ahead and reinforce some knowledge that we already have about revolves, extruded balls, extruded cuts, chamfers. Uh, but mostly we're going to focus our time on circular patterns, so I'll go relatively rapidly. So let's start out here, and the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this sketch. And what we're going to do is make a revolve, and we're going to make this what I call a hub. So let's make the hub to start with. I'm going to make a revolve in the front plane. It doesn't really matter which plane you start with, but I'll start out with a center line, and that's going to be our revolve axis. Notice I put that perfectly vertical. Grab my line tool. I'm going to go ahead and sketch out my hub shape up, over, down, out, down, over, and I want to be parallel with my origin, and I got a closed body. Apply a few dimensions, and I'm going to go ahead and dimension between my center line and my farthest diameter out here, and we're going to drop that as a diameter, 4.5. This inner one is going to be 1 inch, and the intermediate one is actually going to be three inches. In terms of the height here, I will go ahead and dimension this first level is 0.5, second level is 1, and the third level at 1.5. Sketch should be fully defined at this point. And it is. Let's go ahead and exit the sketch. It's going to guess correctly that I'm going to revolve around the center axis. And there I've got my part that I revolved. Except that. So here's my basic shape. The very first thing I want to do is I want to cut a triangle. And I'm going to cut this triangle on the lower level of my basic shape. That triangle is going to be 0.375 with an inscribed circle, 1.75 vertically above the origin, and the bottom of it's going to be horizontal. So we haven't done a lot of sketching using a polygon, but I know I'm going to make a cut out of this, so I'll choose Extruded Cut. The surface I'm going to click on is this lower level, and I'm going to grab my Polygon Tool. When I grab my Polygon Tool, the very first thing I always do is tell it how many sides I want to make it. So for this instance, I want three and an inscribed circle. And I'm just going to click and drop my triangle, which is a three-sided polygon. X out of my polygon tool, and I'm going to apply a constraint to this bottom edge. And you see if I click on it, I can make it horizontal. That's kind of important because I need to orient my polygon. Now to give it a position, I'm going to use a center line. And I'm going to take a center line, drop it at the origin, bring it up to the center of my part. And this again, I want to be sure that it is vertical, and it is already. I'll use that line to dimension the placement of my triangle, and I want this to be 1.75 inches. And the diameter inside of my triangle, I want this to be 0.375 inches. That will make my part fully defined. We'll go ahead and exit the sketch and cut it by using a through all cut. So now I've got the first seed item here for my first cut at the lower level. Now I want to add some extruded boss bases, again using the polygon tool, to this second level right here. So I'm going to do an extruded boss base, select the second level, select my polygon again, except this time I'm going to go for a hexagon, or a six-sided entity. And I'll again click drop, and I've intentionally put it off to the side a little bit, just to show you how to do this. I will again use a center line to position it, Connect the center of the origin to the center of the part. Click on my line and apply a vertical attribute. Click on the bottom of my uh, hexagon, and I want that to be horizontal. 
Now I want to give a dimension to my uh, hexagon, and I want to make that 0.75. And I need a dimension for its location, and I'll make that location one inch above the origin. It's again fully defined. So let's exit this sketch and extrude that up 0.3 inches. Preview it, looks correct, and accept it. So now I've got my basic shape, but I want to apply a chamfer on this, and I want to do one chamfer on multiple surfaces. So I'll click my drop down by my fillet and select chamfer. I want my chamfer size to be 0 0.05 inches, and I'm going to apply it to this face. It's a symmetric chamfer, and that looks good. Now I need to go around and pick these bottom edges because I'm going to chamfer all of these edges. So I have to be a little bit careful when I pick these so that I don't accidentally pick an incorrect surface. And I'm just rolling my model around and picking them. You'll notice over here in my dialog box, I've got a face and I've got the six lower edges that make up my hexagon. And I'm on full preview. I'll go ahead and accept that. Well, now I've got the three things that I want to pattern. And I, what I want to pattern is I want to pattern my cut extrude one, my boss extrude, my hexagon, and the chamfer that was applied to that hexagon. So let's start with a circular pattern. So up here under linear pattern, you click the drop down and you can find circular pattern. This dialog box looks a lot like the linear pattern we did before. The first question it asks you is what are you going to rotate around? I can click anything that goes around the part. I'm going to choose this edge. I don't have to. I could also choose that surface, this face, that edge, that edge, this edge, surface, and that edge. doesn't really matter because they all go around the same axis. So I'll use that edge. The next thing I want to do is set up my number of instances. And I want to go for six instances. And I'm going to go a full 360 degrees. Now the features here, the easiest way to pick these is to come up here on my Feature Manager Design Tree and choose first the Cut Extrude, and you'll see it previews. Then I'm going to choose my Boss Extrude, that previews. And last, I'm going to choose my Chamfer. Now that's because I'm in full preview. I'll see those pretty clearly and you can actually roll your part around and look. Now I can modify my spacing up here and the number of instances just like I could with a linear pattern. I can also apply instances to skip if I'd like to. I don't really want to skip any instances. So we'll just leave that blank. I can also vary some instances right here and you'll see that I can modify some of the dimensions for specific instances. I don't honestly use that tool a lot. I tend to do circular patterns when I have a strong sense of symmetry in the part. I'll accept it. Preview my part, and now I've made a relatively complex part with nothing more than a single circular pattern and then three features, the cut extrude, boss extrude, and the chamfer. Pretty neat. Before you turn in your part, be sure that you're fully defined on all your sketches, which I am. And also come up here to your Evaluate tab, check your mass properties, and you should see it about 12.21 cubic inches. If you've got those two, go ahead and save your part and submit it. Thanks for watching.